Mock drafts are super important and one of the most fun shows to watch, but this one is special. This one is a head-to-head, mano e mano, Hitman versus Big Shimmy mock draft. You are going to absolutely love it. You, you I, By it, I mean my team, not Mike's. My team was excellent. Make sure you like, you subscribe, and enjoy the ride. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. I'm your host for today. With my best friend, my best friend in the entire world, he's Jason Moore, and he's doing a dance. Let me tell you something, Mike. I am not your best friend today. I am your enemy today. Oh, that's, yes. Today, it might be a shtick about, you know, look, Andy is not here with us. We got the the bear in the house. Cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz. (laughs) Jay Grizz holds it down. And we're best friends. We're, We're best friends, except... I cannot be your best friend for the next hour because I'm going to destroy and melt your face off with my drafting mano y mano against you today. It is a mock a lock a ding dong event. The fantasy hitman versus Big Shimmy. Mm, let's go. <laughs> Before we get into that on today's show, we got some news. We got some uh, buy or sell. We're going to talk about the Cleveland Browns. But big news. We have... Two big announcements that we need to cover. Number one, the draft analyzer in the UDK Plus, the Ultimate Draft Kit, it is launching today. We have today, been Jason, working on it for months and months and months, tweaking it, changing it. I mean, it, it's really been a a love project, a passion project. And uh, if you've done any drafts, I think this time of year it's going to be mostly dynasty teams that are checking it out. But you can even If you're doing a mock draft, like we're doing right now, you head over to Sleeper, do a mock draft, you can manually put in any team you want and see how we would grade that mock. If if you were to actually draft that team, what should you do afterwards? What's your kind of action plan? What grade would you get? Who likes your team best? Um, See where you're strong. See where you're weak. It's, It's a really great tool. I've literally legitimately been using it myself for fantasy purposes and i think y- y'all gonna love it it is very fun everyone likes to you know just get a little pat on the back after the draft i put it in to make sure that i like my own teams we're not always gonna pat you on the back mike well we're- yeah okay sure well or yeah pat on the back either way it could be an affirming or it could be a get your crap together yeah, we're gonna coach you up <laughs> we're gonna coach you up so check that out if you have the udk udk plus you can go uh, right now if you if you would like to. If you uh, want that, ultimatedraftkit.com is where you can get that thing, uh, which will stay updated all off season. And, of course, if you have the UDK and you're like, I want to get in the draft analyzer, you can upgrade as well. Uh, just just before we move on from the draft analyzer, a couple of things. We're, we are still actively working on this. We're going to continue to improve it. We have yep. a couple features uh, that we, we are continuing to build to add on. Um, and we are going to be adding it to the app uh, as soon as possible. So right now we're launching uh, web only. It works. It's mobile optimized, so you can use it on your phone. But as far as in the app, we're going to be uh, getting it there before the real draft season is, is up and active. Correct. And then just a quick... <laughs> Full Clan Assemble moment here. The Podcast Awards, it is that time again. If you want to head over to podcastawards.com and nominate this year podcast for Best Sports and uh, People's Choice. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, make sure you click the little button that says you are wanting to help vote. I would imagine they're also going to nominate the Spitballers podcast for the best comedy podcast. I believe it's a two-time comedy award it winner. It is, back to back. All right. But so just, you know, it's a quick little, hey, you want to help support this show, podcast awards, and nominate those things for us. Uh, if you want to follow the show on socials, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. The content has been flowing fast and furious. Jason, did you catch the clip <laughs> of uh, just highlighting uh, – our lack of exercising 
<laughs> I did not. Oh. I did not. It was a beautifully cut up uh, clip by the intern Mad oh. Dog. It sounds about life. <laughs> that's that's your sounds not, about life. I mean, I heard not exercising. All right, so it's over there or Twitter at the FF Ballers. I am at FF Hitman. Find Jason at Jason FFL and Andy is at Andy Holloway. Let's talk about the Cleveland Browns. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Buy or Sell, the Cleveland Browns will be a top 10 offense in points per game in 2021. And for those who say, wait, what? 2020, points per game, they were 14th. They were 8th in plays, 3rd in rushing yards, 5th in rushing touchdowns, only 24th in passing yards. But this is an emerging offense. You have superstar Nick Chubb, who uh, people are taking in the first round. Kareem Hunt was incredible as a backup running back. You might say you have the ghost of Odell Beckham, but he's at least going to help in uh, the, the offense of the Cleveland Browns, maybe not so much your fantasy team. But you have a lot of good players over there, Jason. Are you going to buy the emergence? Second year with Kevin Stefanski. Jumping into the top 10, can the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield do it? Yeah, I think it's an important question because obviously fantasy points come really on the back of, of scoring offenses. So um, we have statted out every single player on every single team for the ultimate draft kit, and so I actually have the data as to my opinions. This, this is not just a narrative. I think they're going to be good. I currently have Cleveland down as my number eight ranked offense in total points really? scored uh, by offensive skill position players. And, uh, yeah, so I, I do think they're – I mean, this is me. I'm, I've am i been the kind of anti-Odell Beckham uh, one of us. He is ranked a little bit lower in my rankings than a in A little yours. bit. <laughs> and, and Andy's. But even including that, right, like including what I have him down for and what I have Jarvis down for and Chubb, and, I mean – I still see them, uh, according to my rankings, as a top 10 offense. I think the defense is going to be much more improved, but this is a running team. This is a team that if they could run the ball 50 times a game, barely pass the ball and win the game, I think that's what they'd want to do. And I think they're going to be able to do it, you know, uh, a handful of times this year. I love the Cleveland Browns outlook from a real life NFL standpoint. I think they will be contending for uh, that division. And we wanted to highlight this because while Nick Chubb is a first-round pick back of the first, after that, I mean, sixth round is where Kareem Hunt and Odell Beckham are. Eighth round is where Jarvis Landry is. Baker Mayfield in the 13th. If you feel like this is going to be a team that performs at, to the level of a top-10 offense, that's some really low ADPs that you can scoop up and just get a piece of that offense and see if your player hits. Yeah, I mean it, it. It does. It does make sense. I think that makes sense for specifically a player like Kareem Hunt, who was good last year. And if you're projecting this to be like the thing is, is if you're projecting them to be a a, a top ten scoring offense, that's not necessarily great for wide receivers. If you're projecting that coming via winning games and running the clock out and all of that, but there are there are teams, and and we've had this in the past where. Um, you know, you've got three highly ranked wide receivers on a team, but yet the quarterback is lowly ranked, or vice versa, where it's like you're you're drafting this quarterback high, but none of his weapons. Those things can still match up. Uh, you know, right right next to the Cleveland Browns, I have the San Francisco 49ers um, as my number nine scoring offense, and that's a team that I'm not really excited about. You know, I'm not drafting the running backs high. Right. I'm not personally going after. Uh, Ayuk and Debo for injury concerns. I would want George Kittle, but it's kind of a, a similar thing where you know there's going to be fantasy points scored, but now in fantasy football you have to say, well, what's the reliability, uh, the startability of those points, how they're going to come in my redraft or keeper or dynasty league. Baker Mayfield was much better for fantasy over the second half. You had a, a month stretch from weeks 12 through 15 where he was a top 12 quarterback, including – uh, a number three overall finish and a, and a number two. And I'm looking here remembering. So week seven, Baker Mayfield went out and threw 300 yards 
and five passing touchdowns and was the QB six. <laughs> what happened in week seven where my man's throwing five touchdowns and he can't even break into the top five? What a fantasy football is weird sometimes. So there you have it. That is Buy or Sell. That was presented by our friends at Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time, pristineauction.com. Use our registration code BALLERS. You're going to get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. We got a report out of ESPN that Damian Harris is the Patriots' number one running back in, quote, it's pretty decisive. Yeah, they were able to look at uh, Sony Michelle um, this year. Okay, in that's, camp, that's, that and they, seems unfair. Right, they saw him play and they said, Damian Harris, he's, he's pretty good, huh? Um, I mean, I, I have Damian Harris as the clear uh, leader in the rushing attempts. Uh, yeah, I've got him at 232 rushing attempts. Sony Michelle's next up with 88. So I, I've already, before this news, uh, assumed. I mean, when when they were all healthy last year, it was Damian Harris's job already. Yes. Uh, so this is really, to me, a question. Because he's not involved in the passing game, it's just a question about quarterback. Who's the quarterback? Because if Cam Newton is the quarterback, then the goal line opportunities, which is really the only way Damian Harris has a lot of value because he's not a pass-catching guy, sure. that just goes poof. I mean, Cam Newton had double – did he have double-digit rushing touchdowns last year? It sounds right. I want right. to say he did. He was just scoring touchdowns all the time. But then if Mac Jones takes over, that, which, is, that is much, much better for Damian Harris. Which is – it is also being reported that it is a legitimate competition between Cam Newton and Mac Jones. Uh, how do you – how are you feeling about that competition right now? Do you, you think Cam Newton really has the leg up, or is he simply – the veteran, and he's getting the veteran bump right now, and that Mac Jones can steal this job and be the week one starter. I think Cam Newton has a legitimate leg up. Um, he, this is a team that wants to win football games. It's the only, things, the only thing that matters to them. They're not giving a veteran bump. They just want to win games, and their defense is going to be great. Um, we forget how many players, how many important pieces opted out for COVID uh, last season yes. and, and all the improvements that the Patriots are going to have. If I realize Cam was not a good quarterback last year, and you could say, well, then he did have, he had 12 rushing touchdowns. Yeah, goodness gracious. But if you just want to talk about a team that is, you know, they, they went and got two tight ends. The, the number one and number two highest paid tight ends now are on the Patriots. They want to go out there and establish it and run the ball. And Cam Newton is going to help uh, open that up. And, and I, I think he'll win more ball games this season than Mac Jones will. Um, currently, I have him projected for 10 of the 17 starts. Mac Jones was 7 of the 17. I like Damien Harris. We, we've talked about him. that he The ceiling does feel a little bit capped because he's not utilized as a pass catcher. It's not that he can't. His final year at Alabama, he had 22 receptions like he and double-digit receptions in three of his four years, in which he didn't really you – know, it's Alabama. So as a, a freshman, you're really not seeing the field very much. So he has that skill set, and right now he is going at the back of the seventh round. Like that's that's fantastic. The running back thirty four. He is not in that zone of the fourth round, the fifth round, where you're you're passing on really high level wide receivers at that point, and he's in that statistical and probability area where those running backs really do help your team because. He, because you're so stacked everywhere else, and you're just take, you're starting to take your shots around the eighth round. Yeah, I mean, you, you make a strong argument in the sense that he's going after the important wide receivers, um, and so you can when when you pivot. I mean, we're going to do a mock draft today, and you're going to see we're going to end up probably grabbing a bunch of those wide receivers, and eventually you got to pivot back to running backs, and that's when it's like it can get dicey in those seventh, eighth, ninth round yeah, when you're looking just, at running backs. It, look, he's going to be the starter. I still don't want him. Really. Well, it, yeah, because I think Cam starts the year, and if that's the case, I think Damian is going to go out and maybe he'll have a great game. Maybe he'll get 90 rushing yards. But if he gets 90 rushing yards and he doesn't catch a pass and he doesn't get the touchdown. Yeah, nine points. Nine points. Nothing. thank you. That's so brutal, man. I know. It's kind of not that, fair. It's not fair at all because if, if a running back is out there giving you 90 yards, they were a 
an important part of that team. They were an important part of e- – you probably won because if you're up to 90 yards, you have – Yeah, you were allowed to You were allowed to, to continue to run. It's, ah, that's so rough. Yeah. Meanwhile, you'll have James White who caught five passes for 30 yards and he's right there. Right. Now, Mike, we are mock drafting head to head yes. in a minute. Yes. Do you believe me when I say that I won't draft Damian Harris? Or no, is I this don't. A, is this I don't a ruse? believe you. I don't trust a single word coming out of your <laughs> mouth right now. That will. Uh, oh, I almost, I almost moved on, Jason. We got to talk about this little uh, piece here. AJ Brown said he's still recovering from off-season surgery in both knees. Well, you not one. You don't want either getting jealous, Mike. You know, it's like you don't want to overcompensate on one, so you just cut them both up. And uh, go to town. We knew this. We if knew you this. Had, if you had to pick one knee oh, that's to put surgery on, would you go righty or lefty? I'd go righty. I'd go my right knee. Now, do you you, you have a weird ambidextrous thing where you are... I'm left-handed. You, you right left-handed, but you... I sports right-handed. What is wrong with you? No, it's, it's, pick a, per- pick it's a perfect. <laughs> no, I mean, the thing is, is when you've got a magical brain that works in mysterious ways like, like me, I mean, I've got to... I've got to be more unique. So, um, do you kick with your left or right? I would kick with either, dude. I'm my <laughs> my quads are fantastic. I could k- kick you, a ball for miles. You cannot kick with either leg. I can't kick with either leg. But if what? I'm punting a football, I would punt with my left. Okay, so you so my you, plant leg you, is you sport right. So you throw with your right and you kick with your left. Yeah, apparently <laughs> you are you are a mixed up man. No one knows what happens up up here. All right. Uh, so are, are you concerned at all about this quote from A.J. Brown? He, he is the wide receiver at six and ADP. He has got everyone very hot and bothered, a little bit cooled off because of the, the Julio Jones trade, but are you still, you still comfortable with this? I am not concerned in the slightest about the knees because it isn't news. It's just coming back up. We knew this earlier. We knew this when we made our rankings, um, and so – the timeline should be fine. Not concerned in the slightest. Now, am I concerned about where A.J. Brown is being drafted? A little bit. He's still being drafted right now as the wide receiver six. Nothing that's, to do with the too knees. Rich. I, you know, after Julio came to town and I adjusted my rankings, he's he's my wide receiver 13. Um, I okay. don't – you know, when you were drafting A.J. Brown uh, as that wide receiver six through ten range early in this offseason before Julio, you were drafting a guy that you thought – he could be the number one wide receiver this year. Right. He cannot be the number one wide receiver anymore. So taking him as the sixth guy, eh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I love that. All right. That was today's News and Notes presented by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. That's where we're going to be doing our mock draft. Mark, mock draft. Mark draft. Would you like to do a mock draft, Jason? How about Mark? Mark, you want to do a draft? <laughs> Come on over, Mark. Uh, whoopsies, but if you want to check it out, uh, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, we'll be putting the draft board up there to help people follow along. Before we do that, though, we would like to thank today's sponsor, Indochino. The right outfit can bring out something special in us, and with Indochino creating your best look yet, it's more affordable than you think. I have an Indochino suit. I feel fantastic when I put this thing on. It was custom made for me, I went down to the Indochino shop. It was so nice. Lickety split. They measured me up, and it was like, oh, well, I'm I'm done. Okay. And they, they know said, what yeah. they're doing. And, you, I mean, you get to customize so many things about this suit. It's not just point, and then they go, okay, well, here you go. No, you get to, you get to change a lot of things. You get the look that you want, and then the suit showed up, and this thing fit like a glove. Jason, you also have an Indochino suit. You all, You look fantastic thing, it's hard to find clothes that fit perfectly for team hefty boys for team hefty boys yeah dude it's amazing putting on the indochino and like i said it, it you you won't believe the customizations that you can put into an indochino suit and the price point is right with suits starting at just 3.99 with all the customizations included but check this out shop for your next best look or book a virtual style consultation at indochino.com and right now you can get 50 bucks off that already low price of three ninety nine or more by using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of three ninety nine or more at indochino.com. Promo code FOOTBALLERS. 
And we'd, of course, like to thank Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Uh, Hello Fresh, long, long time sponsor, long, long time uh, purveyor of foods that go in my mouth. Uh, because <laughs> I love I love cooking Hello Fresh meals. I I made a uh, Hello Fresh meal last night for yep. the fam. I did a uh, it was like a Parmesan crusted chicken with some couscous. I've got which, shout out to couscous, couscous is so good. It's man. underrated, man. And you want to know where where I found that out? Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Hundred yeah. percent. They did it with the uh, the garlic butter. Uh, so oh good. man! Look, they cut out all the stress of meal planning, the grocery trips trips to the store. Um, you can enjoy. Getting dinner quick and easy on the table in about 30 minutes or less. They even have their quick and easy meals, 15 to 20 minute dinners, breakfast on the go. Look, we've all got busy lives. HelloFresh makes it easy. They deliver right to your door. They give you the ideas, pre-measured, perfect ingredients, fresh quality ingredients sourced directly from growers delivered right to your front door. You will love it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers14 and use code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash footballers14, all one word, and use code footballers14 for 14 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, it's America's number one meal kit. Are you ready, Jason, to mock draft? <laughs> Let's mark draft. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. As I said, we will be mock drafting on the Sleeper platform. Uh, we, we will be using them for all of our mock drafts this year with their updated ADP, very customizable platform. It's easy to use. It's, it is a great place. Now, Jason, it's the Fantasy Hitman versus the Big Shimmy, and this is what they are saying. This could be one of history's greatest battles Fit versus fat. Oh. Hair versus bear. Pecs versus specs. Style versus guile. Resting angry face. Eyebrows furrowed versus arms chock full of Disneyland churros. Mm. Let's get after the it. The hitman versus the shimmy. I think that, the, that's I, what they are. That's that, not what I'm saying. Right. No, that's no, them. That's the people. Uh, look, the people are on uh, team regular man over here. Your team, regular man? I'm a regular man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the people are rooting for me. So we uh, Brooks randomly assigned us draft positions. Um, we ended up with the eight and twelve. I am. I'm at the turn and burn, baby. Yeah, and I am at the eight spot. Which when I originally heard, I was like, "Crap," because you're already behind the eight ball. You don't get one of the superstar running backs. Uh, you know if, that you'd get in the top four or five picks, or do you? And then it, I started thinking. I was like. Wait a minute. Ezekiel Elliott's been falling. And while he's falling because a lot of people think the wheels have fallen off, right. I do not think that. I think Ezekiel Elliott's going to be fantastic. And here he is sitting for me. Here's how the draft started. All running backs before me, the first seven picks. It's getting crazier and crazier every year. Running back central. It went Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley, and Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. So happy Team 7 went Jonathan Taylor because I have <sighs> Would you have taken Taylor? No. No, okay. I would not have taken Taylor. Um, at that point, I probably would have considered pivoting um, to a wide receiver. Okay. So I'm happy to have Zeke fall to me at 8. He will be my pick. And we're off to the races. And just for some clarity at home, we are doing a 12-team half PPR. One quarterback. Two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex, and five on the bench. So you went ahead and you took Ezekiel Elliott? I did. And then uh, the computers uh, did what I would have done right after Zeke and pivoted oh, to wide, wide receivers. Devontae Adams and Tyree Kill went. And then oh. the pick that I was hoping to get with my second round, because every now and then he there slips was, a second. There was zero percent chance. That was my first pick. I knew he would be picked by you i'm so thrilled to see him go at pick 11 travis kelsey's off the, the board Mike, is you already, don't hit him it's already against me team hefty boys now this is this is particularly brutal because as of right now aaron jones in my statistics is ranked out like aaron Rodgers is going to be there because if aaron Rodgers is back to me Aaron Jones is great. Mm -hmm. He's he's back. He's automatically a top ten guy. He is a difference maker, and he's a uh, he's just a strong running back one. But, 
but I don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to be there. I mean, thankfully, this is a mock. But if Jason, tell me this. Yes. If I take Aaron Jones here. I will treat it as if Aaron Rodgers is gone. A yeah, terrible pick. Dang it. But what if he drops to you? Oh, Aaron Rodgers is back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. On the turn, this is a brutal place to be, but whatever. We don't know if he will be gone or not, so I'm just going to take Aaron Jones. Now, I have an extremely long wait. Yeah, it's it's Until always I interesting. Get my third pick. When you're at the turn, you have to decide. Uh, a lot of times in the past, I have chosen to go a running back and a wide receiver at the turn because it it evens you out. It lets you, you know, if if two good running backs or two good wide receivers happen to fall to the next turn, you can pivot and go in any direction. On the other side, uh, the ADP of running backs been flying up the board, so. It's a long time till you get to choose your second one. So this is wh – which way are you going to go here uh, with your second pick? I'm going to be honest. I don't know. Okay. I gave you time. <laughs> I was trying to fill time Let's, with words. So at what, Glad at, to see you were not thinking. No, I, sh I shut it down. I okay. shut it – I was already still tilting over the Travis Kelsey situation. If I take a wide receiver here, I would go with Stephon Diggs. But the running backs who I would consider here, uh, I'm fine taking Najee here personally. Uh, but Najee, my champion, Antonio Gibson, those would be the really the running backs that I would be deciding between if I wanted to stack up there. But uh, I'm going to tell you who I thought you were going to go with. Yeah, please do. I thought you were going to go with Awesome Eckler. He's uh, he's in consideration for me as well. But I'm going to take my number three wide receiver off the board. Uh, just be s strong and stout, at least at my. RB1 and my wide receiver one. I went with Stephon Diggs from the Buffalo Bills. All right. And I was hoping that either uh, Austin slash Awesome Eckler or Joe Mixon would return to me. So, Mike, this m must make you happy. It does not make me happy that uh, those guys are gone. You cannot take them. But you're, you're in such a good spot here with your boy Cam Akers still there, Antonio Gibson, Calvin Ridley, if you wanted to grab my wide receiver four, Najee Harris, you could take one of the big tight ends if you want. Pick, yeah, man. If Tra if you're on the edge and Travis Kelsey doesn't drop to you, this this doesn't, sucks, doesn't man. Feel I feel like I'm already up against it. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, I feel like I'm in a good spot. I took, you know, one of my guys that I think, you know, I'm higher than consensus in Zeke in the first round, and I'm going to take another guy that I'm higher than consensus in the second. I didn't get him the last mock draft we did. I'm going to take Cam Akers, who I really believe has a chance to be a, a top five type of running back, and there's a lot of projection going on there, but I think if you are able to pair him with someone like Zeke, someone that is uh, at the very least assured of volume, then you have the luxury to be wrong about Cam Akers and not submarine your team at the running back position. After Cam Akers, we saw DK Metcalf, Najee Harris, Calvin Ridley, Antonio Gibson. Then Team 3 took Patrick Mahomes. They want to get that QB1 locked in there. George Kittle, A.J. Brown. That rounded out the second round. Jason, oh, were you shaking your head? I, I was shaking my head because I, I looked at what was available okay. for me and I was disappointed. All right. so, <laughs> Coming down in the third round, Michael Thomas, Justin Jefferson. So Michael Thomas ahead of Justin Jefferson. That's interesting. J.K. Dobbins, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Darren Waller, DeAndre Swift, and Terry McLaurin. Jason is on the clock. Looking at the makeup of some of these teams, it is interesting. You have a couple balanced teams, but you also have Team 4 and Team 6. Running back hoarding. You have Team 4 here with Alvin Kamara, Antonio Gibson and Clyde Edwards Alaire, that is a nice foundation. Like it's ironic you don't, even, you, don't, you don't have to take any more running backs. It's ironic you bring that up because my goal I love that. Having started with Zeke and Cam Akers, what my hope was when I took Cam Akers was I wanted Clyde Edwards Alaire, who I've seen drop to this spot, I wanted him to get back to me. Because if I could have started Zeke, Cam Akers, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, I would have started with those three. Right. And you're exactly right. I might not have drafted another running back the entire rest of the draft. Maybe with my last pick, if there's um, someone that's fallen to a great value or something like that. But if you can really show massive strength at the beginning, then you can load up at your wide receiver and your flex spot. Um, right. 
Unfortunately, that didn't happen, so I'm looking here at uh, the, the running backs that are left. I don't feel confident enough. David Montgomery would be the next good back. Chris Carson is there, and they're good, but they're not necessarily good enough for me to bypass my first wide receiver. I've already got two running backs and, and take that strategy. So that strategy is out for me. Um, Darren Waller, George Kittle are gone. So tight end is out for me. We're in the third yeah. round. So quarterback is out for me. So I know I'm at wide receiver here. And when I'm at wide receiver, I'm between my, my two highest guys, which would be Amari Cooper and Allen Robinson. And I have seen this quite a bit this year where I'm looking between those guys. And I like Amari Cooper more. He is ahead of my ranking. It, that doesn't bother me at all. But I'm not going to take him. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Because I have seen, and, and the, the reality is, um, I'm on the short turn here, so this might be less valuable for me than if I was about to go on to my long turn pick. But the reason I'm going to select Allen Robinson instead of Amari Cooper is C.D. Lamb. The fact okay, that okay. if C.D. drops to a certain spot, I like taking him. But I don't want to stack him with Amari Cooper. And so I feel like if I'm taking Allen Robinson, that doesn't. there's no one else there that would get in my way of a wide receiver that, that I like. So I'm going to take Allen Robinson. He's a top 10 wide receiver in my rankings this season. How do you feel about having uh, – uh, Zeke, it, did did the fact that you had Zeke as your foundational running back factor into the Amari Cooper at all? No, no, that that didn't. I I am fine. Personally. So you'll be fine with Zeke if Ceedee Lamb comes back. You're good with that stack. I am good with that. There's um there's different strategies you implement with stacking, right? If you if you're talking best ball, oh come on, Team Eleven, <laughs> you goodness were, gracious. Oh, this is great. I love it. Tilt, Mike. Tilt and 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 die so jason took alan robinson then 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 keenan allen david montgomery and team 11 crushes my spirit yet again they took chris carson carson was the last running back that i am comfortable with spending my you know a, a late third or early fourth because on the board josh jacobs miles sanders kareem hunt where to me we are in that zone where it is it is gross, and I really don't want a part of it. So I'm looking over at the wide receiver position because I agree. I mean, I don't even – at tight end, maybe I could take Mark Andrews here. I don't hate that, actually. I'm going to consider that. But I am going to be the one that scoops up Amari Cooper from you. I figured. So Aaron Jones, Stephon Diggs, Amari Cooper. I dig that. Now do I just take C.D. Lamb? <laughs> <laughs> go with my super stack and then take Dak in the at the back of the fifth and go all in on the Cowboys doing something great. But no. While you I'm, decide I'm, I'm gonna take Mark Andrews here. Okay. Yep. I have I don't I've not mocked a team with Mark Andrews, so I don't know how I will feel at the end of it. But in wide receiver wise, you're talking, you know, Evans, Godwin, those are guys I could have gone with, but you know they have their they have their own question marks of Tom Brady spreading things around a little bit more and just locking it down. I don't have to fret. I don't have to think about the waiver wire for Mark Andrews or with Mark Andrews as my tight end. My fab zero dollars. Hopefully, we'll be going to the tight end position. It's just locked in. So there there is a bit of security that I like going with Mark Andrews right there. Yeah, I I I get that. Um... I think we've learned over the last decade, especially the direction that the that the NFL has been going, that if you have a secure tight end spot, it is a real advantage because you can't you can't just pick up guys off the waiver. I mean, you could stream against a bad matchup, and that works for tight end, but it is not as prevalent and easy as it is with quarterback. Quarterback. You know if you're straight yes. in that position, you could do it every single week if you're in a single quarterback league, and you will be fine. But the reality is when you do that with tight end, you could have a good week, or you can end up with jack squat. After Mark Andrews, Mike Evans, Miles Sanders, Chris Godwin, and Jason is back on the clock. Zeke, Cam Akers, Allen Robinson, that is your team thus far. Your strategy of passing on Amari Cooper to let CeeDee Lamb drop, that worked out for you. He is available. Julio Jones is there. Robert Woods, yeah, DJ there's, Moore. There's some interesting wide receivers here. Are you sticking to your guns? I am. I am uh, sticking with my strategy right now of feeling like I'm. I'm locked into wide receiver. I'm not at the place I would draft a quarterback yet. The tight ends on the board don't interest me at this spot. 
um, and the running backs aren't worth it. So C.D. Lamb, my strategy of bypassing Amari Cooper and taking Allen Robinson in case C.D. Lamb was my highest-ranked wide receiver, it worked. He's here, but he's not my highest-ranked wide receiver. One spot ahead of him in my rankings is, in fact, first ballot Hall of Famer Julio Jones. Okay. And I am taking Julio Jones. I think Julio with Allen Robinson is going to be a great wide receiving core. Uh, plenty of targets. I don't think Julio is going to be what he was in Atlanta, but he is still my next highest ranked wide receiver. I'll take him over CD. Josh Jacobs, Josh Allen, Robert Woods, Kyler Murray, Miles Gaskin, Kareem Hunt, and CD Lamb dropped all the way to the back of the fourth round. We start out the fifth with Kenny Galladay, DJ Moore. Rookie Travis Etienne fell down to the fifth round there. Adam Thielen, he will be a very polarizing figure in fantasy football. Lamar Jackson, Kyle Pitts, and Brandon Ayukin goes. And then Jason, you are back up on the board. Your team is completely balanced. Two running backs, two wide receivers. Where are you leaning? Well, I am sad. I'm really in a <laughs> I'm in a spot I'm not liking You're, here. I love my team so far. Which which of those players was the thing that made you sad? Thielen? Uh, actually, uh, he went much, much earlier, um, so it wasn't like he almost got to me, but I have seen plenty of times him get to this spot and be drafted in a different order. It was Kyler. Kyler's my auto fifth-round pick. If okay. He's, if he's there okay. in the fifth, I'm taking him. Um, I, I did that the last mock, but he went in the four uh, the 409, which is honestly a better spot for him. Um uh, now I'm here and I can go any direction. Um, I'm between deciding on whether or not I'm willing to pull the trigger on TJ Hawkinson here because TJ Hawkinson, this is his ADP. We're w right now. Uh, what, what draft pick is this? I think this is it's the five Oh eight. Uh, right. But what, uh, what pick is this? The 55. I think this might be the 55. Who cares? Hit the Who button. cares? <laughs> if the math doesn't check out, it was on, Jason Moore. Well, at the very least, that is his ADP. Uh, him being T.J. Hawkinson. I'm gonna, I'm gonna gamble, and I think I'm gonna lose. You already have your tight end, uh, but there's three other teams that team don't have 11, their tight end. Team Eleven does not have a tight end, or does have their tight end. I'm sorry, oh, they have Travis right, they have Kelsey. Kelsey. So there are two teams. So f essentially, four picks between you and your next one that could take T.J. Hawkinson away from you. Yeah, um, I still have a lot of belief. I know he was very, very uh, inconsistent. But when you have 100 receptions, a lot of yards, you play for a great quarterback, you have a great rapport, you just got paid a bag. I'm still all about Tyler Lockett this season. Okay. I'm not going to worry too much about his poor stretch of games that uh, where he didn't score because consistency is an inconsistent metric. So I will uh, take Tyler Lockett to go with Julio and Allen Robinson here and see if Hawkinson – Makes it back. Uh, breaking news. He did not. He did you not gambled and you lost. You get nothing. Well, I got Tyler Lockett. So I'm pretty happy. Honestly, I, I assumed I would lose Hawkinson there. I'm still, even though I'm bullish on Hawkinson, I think he's going to be the next guy to kind of level up and be a consistent producer. I don't think he's going to be a, a Kelsey, a, a Kittle, even an Andrews of two years ago. But I think he's going to be a consistent producer at the position. I'm just not willing to spend a fifth on him. Okay. After you took Tyler Lockett, Cooper Cup, and then Team 10 breaks your heart with TJ Hawkinson. Dak Prescott off the board. Uh, that puts me back on the clock for my turn picks. Uh, I'm sitting with Aaron Jones, Stephon Diggs, Amari Cooper, and Mark Andrews. So I only have the one running back. The running backs on the board would be Chase Edmonds, Melvin Gordon, James Robinson, Raheem Mostert. Uh, I mean – nothing – I don't mind Chase Edmonds right here, I suppose, to take the shot. But over at the wide receiver position, Deontay Johnson, Jamar Chase, Odell Beckham, Cortland Sutton, Chase Claypool. This is – this is a tough one here for me. I believe I am locked into at least one of the Steelers wide receivers. I have Diggs. I have Amari Cooper. That is some really high target volume for those two guys. Do I just want to keep adding on the volume or go with the upside pick of Chase Claypool that may, perhaps he breaks out? Uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to go with Deontay Johnson. I'm going to lock that in. So I have my three wide receivers here. And running backs, like I said, it is getting very scarce. You'd 
I mean, there was, Jason, a little bit of hype of uh, – I'm going to throw this on there. Zach Moss mm. might, might, might take over the running back position for the Buffalo Bills. Ooh, what, do you, um, what do you think about that? Well, looking at who's available, Melvin Gordon might as well. James Robinson might take over – uh, for for his team, Mike Davis might take. I mean, it's just Mike Davis is the starter, and Mike Davis is my pick. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the running backs are really thinning out here. Melvin Gordon went, Raheem Mostert went after your Mike Davis pick. So I'm I'm now on the clock, and when I'm looking at the running backs, I again I'm not a believer in Chase Edmonds as a guy I want to rely on for running back. Um, then it's James Robinson, Javante Williams, guys that, you know, you're really, really not sure of the role. And when you look at my roster, I've got two running backs, Zeke and Cam, and I've already got three wide receivers. So a lot of times I think fantasy football managers, when they're playing the game, they're saying, I got to go running back here. If they don't like the, the quarterback or tight end, they, they're like, well, I've already got three uh, wide receivers. Sure. I've only got two running backs. So I'm and the running backs are thinning out, so I got to take one. But if I did that, I would be taking a James Robinson type of player over, uh, you know, a, a wide receiver that I think is, be, you know, much better. Someone like um, people love Jamar Chase and Odell Beckham. They're on the board. Their upside versus one of those running backs, I think, is is significantly higher. Um, are you going down the ADP? What's that? Are you Are you going to dig down? I might dig down. Um, I, you know, personally, I'm looking at who is left here. And so, I mean, are you going Robbie? So Robbie's the guy I want. <laughs> Robbie really I knew, is. The, I read you like a book. You read me like <laughs> a book because Robbie Anderson is much, much lower, and it's tempting to play the game, right, of going, well, you know. he. That's a long wait. It's a long wait, and I don't think I'd get him. I already played in, in law, and, you know, gambled and lost once. So I'm between basically Robbie Anderson above his ADP, but I believe he absolutely belongs here, or Dallas Goddard at tight end. Those are my two decisions okay. because after Dallas Goddard, then to me it drops down to like a Tyler Higby level guy that I'll get later. Um, but I am a – if go back and listen to yesterday's show. I talk a little bit about Robbie Anderson. I believe that he is – a really talented wide receiver on a team that is offensively up and coming. And he had so much volume last year, 136 targets, and he's talented. So I am going to add Robbie Anderson here. I'm adding him 136 above. targets, 95 receptions, almost 1,100 yards, only three touchdowns. He just didn't get the touchdowns. Yeah. And that's, that's the hopeful change from Teddy Bridgewater is someone that could get it done in the red zone. All right, you took Robbie. Then we saw Javante Williams, the rookie running back out of Denver. Jamar Chase, another rookie. T. Higgins. So Jamar and T. Higgins, back to back. How does that make you feel, Jason? Oh, it makes me feel fine. Um, I I think that you're calling your shot choosing Jamar Chase because the upside is higher. I still believe T. Higgins will have a better season this year, but it has a less likelihood of the massive breakout that you hope for in fantasy, but I, I, I do think genuinely T Higgins has a better fantasy football season than Jamar Chase, and I would be willing to bet that. Mm, I'll consider it. Chase okay. Edmonds, <laughs> Dallas <laughs> Goddard, <laughs> Russ <laughs> Wilson, <laughs> Justin Herbert, <laughs> Odell Beckham Jr., James Robinson, Chase Claypool, Noah Fant, so we had a, two tight ends go off the board, Ronald Jones, Will Fuller, and Juju Smith-Schuster, Jason is back up. We are in the seventh round. Jason has got Zeke Akers, Allen Robinson, Julio Jones, Tyler Lockett, and Robbie Anderson. All right, so now I'm looking. You're on, you're on a hot streak here. Four wide receivers. Four wide receivers in a row. There's still uh, Devontae Smith, who I really like. Debo Samuel, who a lot of other people really like. Um, Curtis Samuel, a player I like. But the reality is with four wide receivers and those players not really being game changers. They're... Now I'm at the level of wide receiver where it's like there could be's. You know what I mean? Sure. They, like I'm I'm hoping if I grab one of these guys they pan out. Now if I go and I look at comparing against running back, uh you know, I was before when I was talking about getting a a fourth wide receiver over the likes of James Robinson who is just a question mark and 
Is he going to be the guy? Is his team going to be any good? Is he going to become the backup by week five because Travis Etienne, their first round running back, takes over? Who knows? Um, and here in the seventh round, we were talking about Damian Harris earlier this episode uh, about the fact that once you get past all those studly wide receivers, the chance to get a starting running back who could be more valuable, this is where I'd rather right. go to running back. And when I'm looking at the board, there's a couple of names. There's Damian Harris, David Johnson. Uh, and David Johnson is, James, I believe, still technically a starting running back. James Conner as well. Those three guys are starting running backs. Um, I have a hard time with James Conner with his health history, uh, but he has the best offense. I don't necessarily think either the Patriots offense or the Texans will be good. Patriots will be better. But David Johnson could genuinely catch 70 he, he balls could. this year. He could. Um, and in the seventh round, the starting running back, even on a bad team, but because he's a pass catcher, I'm going to pull the trigger on David Johnson, grab him in the seventh. Team 11! Oh, did they oh do it again? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I had this – I had an incredible plan. It was going to be – just sensational here. I was going to go. So, oh, dude, that is so frustrating. So, Jason took David Johnson, DJ Chark, Aaron Rodgers, and then rookie Devontae Smith went off the board. At the back of the so at the back of the seventh and the start of the eighth, I was going to hit a stack. You are going to go Hurts. I was going to go Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith. And, like, Doubling up, on, man! I would love that. Doubling up on that potential That'd be of great, man. Do that. <laughs> I'm gonna undo this pick, and I'm gonna take Devontae Smith. That is, I was all ready for it. <sighs> so at this point of the draft, I don't mind. You know, I'm open to taking the quarterback. Jalen Hurts, I believe, is a difference maker. Yeah, sure. Job security, it's sketchy. Small sample size. But Jalen Hurts is one of just a handful of of quarterbacks in the NFL who could run for a thousand yards. Tom Brady is still on the board. I, I know that Andy would auto select Tom Brady here. Stafford, Joe Burrow, and Ryan Tannehill. Uh, dude, whatever. I'm still take still gonna take Jalen Hurts here. But I believe I'm, Jalen, I'm Jalen Rager is available. If you'd like to complete that stack, I am so <laughs> tilted <laughs> right team, now. Team eleven. Is this is what is really happening. Brooks beating you up. Is that you? That's no, not me. Mm. Jason's the commissioner technically <laughs> of this draft. Is that you? Uh, I wish. I wish. I'd like to think somewhere my DNA is here in sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's kind of a weird thing to say. Uh, wide receivers who I would consider here. We got Debo Samuel. Maybe the upside of Jerry Judy. I don't know, man. I'm, Jerry Judy is a very difficult draft pick for me right now with Cortland Sutton and still being Drew Locke. How are you feeling about your boy, uh, Judy? I, look, I think Judy's a talented wide receiver and exceptional route runner, and he'll only get better. But you're, you, you outlaid it perfectly. I have a hard time selecting him because Cortland Sutton, I think, is going to be the guy. Like, I wanted Cortland Sutton um, – over Robbie Anderson. That that was who I wanted, but he went two picks ahead of me. Okay. Um, But when you're talking about being the wide receiver two for your team, and then your quarterback is questionable at best, yeah, it's it's a hard draft pick. At running back, Damian Harris, Leonard Fournette are still there. Hey, you said you liked him in the seventh. This is the eighth pick. Yeah, and he would be my running back four. Uh, so I'm actually – what I'm debating right now is do I take Damian Harris, the locked-in starter, but I agree with you that if it's if it's Cam Newton, you have a touchdown floor. If somehow Mac Jones is the guy, Damian Harris could see seven-plus rushing touchdowns and a whole bunch of work. Or do you, you call the shot that James Conner is actually the goal line running back for Arizona, potentially the starting running back, inherits that Kenyon Drake role uh, of last year where and Chase Edmonds just – stays as the satellite back as the third down uh running back uh i'm gonna go ahead it's my running back four so i'm gonna take some upside i'm gonna go with james connor okay just in case just because here's my belief system if james connor does take that role of being the starting running back for arizona 
on the table is 10 plus rushing touchdowns. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, with with Rodney Hudson at center and the uh, amount of opportunities Kenyon Drake got to score touchdowns, whether he right. did or did not with a bad center right up the middle last year, it, you're 100% right. He has the the chance, if he's healthy, to score 10 uh, rushing touchdowns. Like I said, when I passed on Connor, it was a health thing. I, I just really have a hard time believing in his health. He had – so Kenyon Drake had – 22 carries inside the five yeah and if you compare that to everyone Turned else it into has, nine touchdowns yeah i mean which isn't bad i mean that that alone is good i mean Kenyon drake last year you know was a he was a top 15 running back wasn't he he yes he finished as the running back 14 he was he was just disappointing based off of where you drafted where you drafted him and the fact that they just stopped using him as a pass you catcher. drafted Kenyon drake at the back of the first round right and that was obviously disappointing to get the running back 14. Let's say Connor's not as good as the running back 18. Sure. In but the you just round? drafted him in the eighth round. Yep. That's great. Uh, I've got no qualms there. So I'm looking at my team, and I'm like, man, it's so good. <laughs> uh, I'm balanced. You know, You're loving that David Johnson pick? Uh, as my th as my RB3 in the in the seventh round, I am uh, I am absolutely fine with that. So I got Zeke, Cam Akers, and David Johnson. I've got four stellar wide receivers in Allen Robinson, Julio Jones, Tyler Lockett, Robbie Anderson. So, so after James Conner, I don't know if you had said it, Jay, but Debo Samuel, Damian Harris, Leonard Fournette were the next picks. Yeah, and I was actually sweating because you took Jalen Hurts. I'm usually like a 10th round quarterback drafter, um, sure. and we're here in the 8th, and so I don't usually pull the trigger here, but this is where tier-based drafting comes in. It doesn't matter what round. It doesn't matter. You know, if you're in super flex it's in the supply rounds, demand. In, it's supply demand. And there are only two quarterbacks left that I'm really excited about leaving this draft with. That would be Tom Brady and Ryan Tannehill. And there's a lot of picks between now and, and my next pick. So I'm going to pull the trigger on my quarterback five, um, which is Tom Brady right now. I love him. I would usually in a lot of leagues we play in, I, I would expect I could get Tom Brady in the 10th because oh, no. yeah. we're late round quarterback draft people. Um <laughs> And uh, and so a lot of times quarterbacks slide down, but that's what's nice about mock drafting is you you can see sometimes quarterbacks go early, sometimes they go late, and you can establish different um, techniques and and what to do's. So this draft has worked out great for me because I wanted me, Tyler. Me, 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 me. Right, I'm so just after you took Tom Brady, Jerry Judy, Tyler Boyd, Corey Davis, Brandon Cooks. Curtis Samuel, great which pick, is a team three. great pick in the eighth round. Trey Sermon, tight end Logan Thomas. Then we start the ninth round. Zach Moss, Kenyon Drake, Jarvis Landry, Matthew Stafford, Jalen Waddle, Mike Gesicki, and then Michael Carter, rookie for the New York Jets. I had a little Oops. bit of – I had some dreams that maybe he dropped back to me uh, it, for my pick here at the end of the ninth. And, Jason, you are back on the clock. So I said it when I uh, didn't get Dallas Goddard or TJ Hawkinson. I pretty much have like a a few players I'm targeting at different spots at tight end. Uh, those those guys earlier in those mid rounds is the Hawkinson Goddard, but I can't ever seem to pull the trigger on early picks because okay. there's just more valuable wide receivers and running backs. So there. Zach Ertz, um, <laughs> Greg gonna grab Ertz right here. It's tempting, man. It's tempting. I really think he's gonna this is his find year. a team and and play football. <laughs> Um, but no, Tyler Higby, um, you know, we, we know that Stafford can use a tight end. We know that Gerald. Well, yes, is, he can. Of course he can because is, he's on the field and it's a, it's a legal play in football. See, Called he's it. allowed to, I uh, stand uh, exactly with my statement. Um, <laughs> but Gerald Everett's gone. And we know that when Gerald Everett was out, um, for the second half of the season, two sure. years ago, Higby dominated. So he's kind of my late round target. And here we are in the ninth round. He's available. Um, I'm going to learn from my last mock draft where I I just kept thinking he'll keep dropping, and then every tight end went ended with uh, I don't even remember in that draft. It was it was probably terrible, like your team. It was Tyler Higby <laughs> it was uh, Cook. is your pick. Oh yeah, it was uh, Robert Tunyon, Marquise Hollywood Brown, and Joe Burrow went off the board. I am on the clock. Uh, we are nearing the end. This is the 9-10 turn. Uh, my team at this point is pretty balanced. I have Aaron Jones, Mike Davis, James Conner at the running back position, Stephon Diggs, Amari Cooper, Deontay Johnson are my wide receivers. And then I have my onesies, 
are filled with Mark Andrews and Jalen Hurts. So my thought process here is I can go really just wherever I want to go. Uh, best player available. I don't have to particularly target one position. So I'm, I get him in like every draft and I'm happy about it. I'm going to take the dude with the quads. I'm going to take A.J. Dillon and I get to uh, double up uh, uh, on the fact that I have Aaron Jones back up now. Uh, so the Green Bay backfield is locked up, and clearly in this mock draft, Aaron Rodgers will be the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. I just want everyone uh, I want everyone who is voting on the poll to consider that Aaron Rodgers is still the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Wait, is he? Oh, he reported? I don't care if he reported. Oh, so he's not. He he's didn't not report for OTAs. It was optional, Jason. Wait, he didn't report for OTAs every other year of his career? Oh, no, he did. He did, but he was tired this oh, year. Oh, that's right. Jeopardy. He, Jeopardy is, wore him out. Right. You mean his new job? His his new his side hustle. Yeah, okay. It's like, you know, like how you could do this and be an Uber driver. Well, Aaron Rodgers is a professional quarterback and a Jeopardy host. And, a, and an Uber driver. Okay. I thought you said he has no shot to be the Jeopardy host. Uh, how are look, you going to give him that job if you're over here saying he can't do that job? Well, I'm not saying that they won't give him the job. He's famous. I'm saying he sucked at it, and, <laughs> and he shouldn't get it. But um, all right, so now you're still on the clock, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, I am still on the clock. I was actually about to star A.J. Dillon. Like, I don't want to forget about him. Yeah. And, then, and then I literally didn't because I knew uh, there's right. no you, chance he was getting past You know how I do things here. Uh, and <sighs> let's just go ahead and we'll, we'll just grab another running back and uh, just keep building up that potential – Backup running back depth. I'm going to take the Gus bus. They did give him a bag of money that I don't think any of us were really actually expecting. The Baltimore Ravens are going to be one of the most run-heavy teams in the league. They will contend for top three rushing touchdowns. Where do those break down? That's what is part of the gamble. But in the 10th round, I'll take the Gus bus, and maybe he's on the field more than people think. So I was looking at adding running back depth to my team, and the two players I wanted were A.J. Dillon and Gus Edwards. Okay, so yes. Does that make you that. feel a little bit better? It uh, Well, not from what – I'm battered and bruised from Team 11 over here, yeah. so I'm still reeling, but at least that's something. Yeah, that's something. Now, you've, you've actually pushed me into something that I don't usually necessarily do, which ironically you just did. You took the backup to your main starter in Aaron Jones. I'm going to do that with Tony Pollard. Um, again, I don't, that's not bad. I wanted that's AJ Dillon here. or Gus Edwards, guys that I think can contribute more without an injury ahead. Um, but Tony Pollard is is key to this team because if the wheels have indeed fallen off on uh, Zeke Elliott and he ends up becoming far more involved, or Zeke gets injured because you know he's of his workload in his career. My team is fine with Tony Pollard. So it, he, there is a world where you can actually play both of these guys. Yeah, I mean, if Tony Pollard gets more and more involved in the passing game, it could happen. I don't project that personally sure. with the amount of targets. and uh, I'm just throwing out that that is, that is a possibility. Jason took Tony Pollard, Naeem Hines, Devin Singletary, Trevor Lawrence, Devontae Parker, Daryl Henderson, Big Irv Smith, and Mike Williams round out the 10th round. Then we have Gronk, Antonio Brown in the 11th round, which is just – Insanity. Marvin Jones, Latavius Murray, Jamal Williams, the backup running back for Detroit, Michael Pittman from the Indianapolis Colts, who I was really hoping was going to drop to me. That was going to be an auto pick for me, but he is gone. Hunter Henry went to Team 7, and Jason's back on the clock. We are rounding it out, Jason. These will be your last two positional picks before you take your incredible defense. Yeah, my defense will be so good. So, so good. I've got four running backs, four wide receivers, one quarterback, one tight end. I can go wherever I want here, and I, you know, so I'm I'm really looking for the best player available. And we're late in the drafts. I want the chance of a breakout. I want to grab a guy who could show up week one and say, "Oh, he leveled up. He's just, the guy." Just draft Henry Ruggs and get it over with. And I will draft Henry Ruggs and get it over with because obviously, um, drafted to be great. Yeah. You know, to yeah. number one draft pick uh, last year for I would have taken him here. Uh, the Raiders and the first wide receiver off the board last year has the opportunity to be the guy on this team. I don't necessarily know that he's going to do it, but you know, when you're staring him down in the eleventh round, got to do what you got to do. So these will be my final two positional picks. I'm going to go wide receiver, uh, but but it is I don't maybe I will. You got Darnell Mooney, Nelson Aguilar, T.Y. Hilton. 
McCole Hardman, Elijah Moore, Jalen Rager. I mean, you are not <laughs> – these are not – I mean, maybe Nelson Aguilar, you can tell yourself the story of he actually he is the wide receiver one and he will be the number one target. Jacoby Myers will have a lot to say about that, as will uh, uh, Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith. But uh, – But Todd Gurley is still available, and I know how that makes you feel. You're like, big name, got to have him. Yeah, I know he's not playing football, doesn't have a team, was terrible last year, is, is, is a broken, old, busted running back, but I know you're going to take Todd Gurley. No. You know what I'm going to do here, though, Jason? Hmm. I'm going to complete my stack. Oh. I'm not going to let Team 11 stand in the way of my happiness of – I don't know why my happiness is stacking Philadelphia Eagles, but I got Jalen Hurts. Former first-round pick, very disappointing rookie season, but he's moving into the slot. Maybe things will be better this year. It's He still could be the number one target on the team. I don't think he will be, but he, maybe he is. I'm taking Jalen Rager. Okay. I won't stand in your way, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I, uh, yeah, my happiness is now complete. Since my team is – I, I still have another pick. Yeah, oh, since my team is clearly me. superior, I, I'm, <laughs> kill me. I'm happy for your happiness. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. So you are still on the clock. Are you going wide receiver, running back, best available? The the wide receivers here are just not inspiring me. I know that Andy likes Darnell Mooney. I'm I like the player and the talent, but I think that Justin Fields takes that job sooner than later. I am O U T on T Y Hilton. I'm just not drafting him. Willing to be wrong, but I think that he is absolutely toasted. You know, you know, I found my guy. But blame Russell Gage, wide receiver two for Matt Ryan. Can he fill the the void that Calvin Ridley is leaving? Because Calvin Ridley will be taking the Julio Jones job. Russell Gage, you know, once they really made the switch, we've talked about it. Well, once Julio Jones was officially like we're not going to have him for the rest of the year Russell Gage's target share did go up it's a Kyle Pitts is a rookie as you like to remind everybody Jason that he is not a superstar yet I'm taking Russell Gage I think I like that upside flyer in the 12th round yeah no I I don't have any problem with that I was I was looking at him a, a round ago and I think he it's just a matter of what you're after are you after the you know when I said I took Henry Ruggs I wanted someone that could explode someone that could really break out yeah um I don't think that's Russell Gage, but Russell Gage is a plug-in filler. I couldn't find anybody else who I really believe could take that step sure. to explode, uh, but Russell Gage, Darnell Mooney, Baker Mayfield, Johnny Smith, they went. Jason is up for his final positional pick. Do you know who it is? Um, you know, I, Or do I need to buy it, you some No, time? no, no. I, I, I know where I'm going. At, at running back, there's nobody that I really like. You could go with an insurance option and uh, Chuba Hubbard and hope that – uh, something unfortunate happens, but I'm going to go with the guy that not, um, hope, not hope that it it's planned just in case. Yes, yeah, sure. Hope, what are you doing over here? No, look, I'm not doing Hoping it because I'm not that taking bad things Tuba. happen. No, I'm saying if I did that, I, I might do that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> get get out of here with your negativity. I would never be that negative. That's why I'm not taking Chuba. Um, instead, I'm going to go with the guy you are O U T on. Disgust me. He's my wide receiver, 34. I oh, think he's. Gross. I think he's still the number one for his team, and he doesn't mm -hmm. have. You know, old man Philip Rivers dinking the ball down five yards uh, across the line of scrimmage. So I'll take T.Y. Hilton and hope. Because Super this into is, that 50 yards a game upside. This is one of those type of picks where uh, you're going to see it week one. Uh, does he have it? Does he have juice? He might not have a great game, oh, but no. you can watch the film and go, He's he, he doesn't have it. I completely disagree. That's one of the problems of T.Y. Hilton is you won't know if he has it week one. Because T.Y. Hilton is so sporadic with when he actually goes off that you're going to have to hold him after week one. If you judge T.Y. Hilton last year by those first few weeks, you would say this guy doesn't have it, and you would have missed out on T.Y. Houston. Well, I mean, you still could have streamed him against T.Y. Houston. You <laughs> want to know how I know you could have done that? Because we recommended doing that off of the waivers. We did. But, um, and it worked out fantastic. <laughs> T.Y. Houston was amazing. <laughs> but the reality is what I'll see is what does this offense look like with Carson Wentz? Is he throwing the ball downfield? Is the number one target? Hilton and and go from there. Look, it was my last positional pick. Get off my back. Uh, so you took T.Y. Hilton. You decided that you don't actually want a twelfth round pick. Bold. We'll see if it pays off for I you. I want waiver pickups. Week one, man. Uh, then Team Seven went with Justin Fields. 
I don't mind it at all at this point. We do, you don't know for sure if it's going to be Andy Dalton. The the budget magician Matt Nagy is trying to convince us it it will be Andy Dalton, but we'll see. Nelson Aguilar, Philip Lindsay, Alexander Madison, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, and Tariq Cohen, and then a whole bunch of defenses that nobody wants to hear about. Yeah, uh, I got the Washington football team. Oh, good for you. I'm going to take the Rams. All right, Jason, read off your team. Wait, the Rams were available? They're my number one defense. Um, I like Washington a lot for defense. Yeah, but, no, I, I like them but both. yeah, I took the Rams. Uh, I've got Brady at quarterback. My running backs are Ezekiel Elliott, Cam Akers, David Johnson, and Tony Pollard at wide receiver. Allen Robinson, Julio Jones, Tyler Lockett, Robbie Anderson, Henry Ruggs, and T.Y. Hilton, and then Tyler Higby at the tight end spot. I have Jalen Hurts as my quarterback. My running backs are Aaron Jones, Mike Davis, James Conner, A.J. Dillon, and the Gus Bus, Gus Edwards at wide receiver. I have Stephon Diggs, Amari Cooper, Deontay Johnson, Jalen Rager to complete that super incredible Philadelphia Eagles stack, Russell Gage, and Mark Andrews is my tight end, and I got Jason's number one defense with my last pick of the draft. Shout out to Sleeper. This is the fastest growing fantasy platform. It is very easy to use on the web. Incredible app. Switch your league over there. You will not regret it. That is going to do it for today's show. Jason, is my team an A plus or an A plus plus? Uh, my team is an A plus plus. I would, I would, if I were to grade That's you, not and I'll what throw, I said. Oh, I just, I, I heard you say A plus, so I assume you were talking about my team. Um, if I were to grade your team, I would give it a solid plus on the C level, like a C plus, maybe a C plus plus. That's gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. There will be a podcast in your pocket on Saturday, so stay tuned. I'm gonna figure out how to digitally scrub Team Eleven from existence. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.